Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. We've got a new film that's just dropped on Epic TV following Steve McClure's battle to climb his first 9A abroad. We caught up with the filmmaker Ewan Ryan and Richie Patterson to find out a bit more about making the movie. It was quite a privilege to watch Steve work a route from having absolutely no knowledge whatsoever of a route up to actually trying to red point the route. Um, usually as a filmmaker when you come and film um, an ascent or an attempt at an ascent, a red point, you tend to come in where the climber has already been working the route for you know whoever many months or years and so they tend to know pretty much exactly what their beta is, they know exactly what they're going to try and do. So you come in with a, a, a kind of a blank slate almost, um, but it was nice to start from afresh with Steve and um, sort of work with him and in a way sort of red point the filming as well and try to figure out good angles and things like that. So the first few days were as much a recce for me as it was for, for Steve on the route. I've known Steve for quite a while now, we've done some stuff together, um, but what really interested me working with him was what's below the surface, um, and the idea was to try to tease that out a little bit in the movie, because all I've ever known about him is what's in the magazines or what's in films, and I've, I've kind of always felt that it hasn't got over the, the true nature of the guy. I wanted the wider public to get more of a sense of what drives him, and where he's come from. Steve's style of climbing is basically figuring out what is the most efficient way of climbing um, a route. Uh, he has so much fight in him um, and once he knows exactly how he's going to do a route um, he can just hang on and just keep boshing out move after move after move uh, and the, the fight is unlike anyone I've, I've worked with before. He was only out here a week, so the time pressure was intense. So I think the most important thing he was able to do was process the information really, really quickly and each day make progress. Um, obviously, I'm not going to give away the ending, but it was incredibly interesting to watch him take what is a very, very difficult route and break it down into sections so that he was able to kind of conquer a certain part of it every time he went on it and uh, I think that was essential for him to, um, to be able to stay positive and make progress um, within an incredibly short time span. Despite what Steve says, uh, he is really strong. Um, he has like the, the strongest fingers I've ever seen. Um, there's a move in this, uh, in this climb uh, clandestino that um, Steve's trying in the movie. Um, which is one of the crux moves for the, the few other guys who've been working the route and it's just the smallest little sort of two finger stacked pad thing and apparently, we, we didn't see anyone else on it but Richie said that when these guys tried it that move was just so stopper for them, they tried so hard and every single time like holding that hold was just really really difficult um, but for Steve like I think like first time, first go he just stuck it and just crimped for the life of him on it and just made the move look so so simple um, and it turned out to be actually not the crux for him. You don't really hear about when professional climbers have maybe a bad day or unfortunate incidents that actually do change the path of their career and change them as a person so it was nice to get Steve to open up about things in his life that have moulded and shaped his his climbing. I had a pretty bad accident in Pembroke, kind of got away with that one, but it was my friend that had a really bad accident and it really happened right in front of my eyes. He took a ground fall, landed on his head, really serious injury, it looked like he definitely died and I had to sort of deal with that firsthand happening right there. And then it became clear that he hadn't died but it it was looking like he probably would die. It was, it was really full on, really intense, the whole experience, and it, 
It took him a long time to recover. It really affected him personally and had a big influence on my climbing. A lot of the film is sort of biographical, autobiographical, Steve talking about his life. And we kind of hoped that we could fit the red point footage um, working uh, clandestino around the stories in his life and sort of chapter the sections of his life and the key moments that make him who he is. I, you know, 47 years of experience can be put together to try a challenge like this and it's kind of unlocking the key moments in those 47 years that brought Steve to the point where he can put up, uh, you know, in Britain's first 9B, he can do, you know, all these eight, all these eight A's and above that he's climbed, something like 800. Um, he can go to Spain and he can work a 9A four days, um, and that's really, really fascinating. Um, it's, it's, it's super inspiring, and I think that's really really interesting it's an interesting person to interview um, and a really really interesting uh, story that Steve has to tell Northern Spain's amazing. I mean, obviously, I moved here and I wrote the guidebook, the Rock of Verde guidebook, so I'm a bit biased, but it's a place that the rock is still unpolished, untouched. There's so many new routes to do. I mean, this 9A that we brought him to do was only opened like three or four years ago. I think both myself and Steve probably overlooked um, Taverga and Asturias um, as a region for, for sport climbing uh, and to be honest when I got there I was totally gobsmacked. There's so much rock everywhere, there's so much um, there's so much potential as well. Everywhere you look is a perfect limestone wall. Um, the rock is really good quality, uh, there's a little bit of cleaning needed for developing new cracks as always but um, the established lines already are absolute classics. It's cool to see that 47 years of climbing doesn't mean that your best days are behind you. Uh, you can still achieve a career best, you know, climb 9B at the age of 47. And it's really, really fascinating. And it's nice to be able to make a film with Steve and eke out the story of his life and give the guy a little bit of fanfare um, that I certainly think he deserves, that he doesn't really like to give himself. Um, you know, strong Steve doesn't think he's strong. Um, and I just, I just, you know, look at the the roots on paper, and you you can just see that that's not true. So it's nice to be able to take Steve's story and show it to the masses. And I really, really hope that people enjoy it. I really hope that it makes you psyched, and I really hope that it inspires people to, you know, really try something challenging and something that, you know, on paper is impossible. But when you break it down into little chunks, is is you know definitely manageable and definitely not as pie in the sky as you might have thought originally. Cheers guys. It's a really good look at how Steve became so good and of course you need to check it out to see if he sends that 9A. If you want to watch it the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.